The world of dolls is truly fascinating. Many see them as just mindless toys for kids to play with, but there's tons of bizarre drama, ruthless business, and straight up mystery that surrounds dolls and the doll community. New lines come and go, brands try to ride various trends and steal each other's ideas, unreleased dolls are leaked, and speculations start flying around. It's wild, and that's just the mainstream doll lines. For every Barbie or Bratz, there are like 50 completely off the wall, bizarre, and or short-lived doll lines that are so obscure that they rarely get any attention. Whether they were financial failures with dismal sales figures, too weird to appeal to kids or just never made it to shelves for whatever reason, obscure doll line lore is quite the rabbit hole. In a previous video we talked about three stories of lost and cancelled dolls, and today we're going to cover three more. From one of the weirdest doll lines ever released to a new update on a lost media doll mystery to a doll line that isn't actually a doll line. Today let's dive back into the mysterious world of strange lost and cancelled doll lines. Before we jump into things, I just want to give a huge thank you to Inview for sponsoring this video. I'm sure that a lot of you already know all about Inview, but if you don't, Inview is an app where you can style your avatar, join chat rooms, meet friends, and go shopping. Today we're talking about dolls, and dolls are all about creativity and expressing yourself, and most importantly, dressing up in sick outfits. Avatars in Inview are basically virtual dolls. The customization is super in-depth, and there are thousands upon thousands of items available from hair and makeup to accessories to clothes shoes and bags. There are so many ways to customize your avatar and so many different aesthetics that you can go for. I made this Valentine's Day look with this insane love heart jacket and this like blonde hair with ribbons in it, so cute. I made like a 2000s gothic casual look. I'm obsessed with the grey striped top, the giant skeleton bunny bag and the hair which is like messy but in a cool way. An emo look with a cat ear beanie, of course a classic. And of course a couple cheeky cosplay looks which were literally so much fun to make. Guess the characters and I'll give you a cookie. Dressing up in Inview is so incredibly fun and honestly it's kind of given me some outfit inspo for real life. Plus once you're done dressing up there are tons of chat rooms that you can hang out and chill in. If you're feeling the winter blues head to the beach or a resort and take in those sunny rays and beautiful views. Honestly putting on a cool outfit and then just chilling and enjoying the atmosphere at one of these virtual beaches is really relaxing and fun I highly recommend. Download Inview for free. Find me in the app at xxprincessluna.xx X and follow me. Don't judge, someone else had already taken the name Izzy's. Whoever took that name, I'm, I'm sleep with one eye open. <laughs> Thank you so much to Envy for sponsoring this video and now let's dive back into the lost and cancelled doll rabbit hole. Novi Stars are probably one of the most infamous cancelled doll lines in the doll community. Created by MGA Entertainment, the company behind Bratz, Rainbow High, and La La Loopsie all the way back in 2012, Novi Stars were conceptually a very unique doll line despite being a pretty clear attempt to write off of the Monster High hype at the time. The premise is that the Novi Stars are aliens who have come to Earth to learn about fashion and make new friends, and their appearance is suitably extraterrestrial. Novi Stars have large, wide heads, big eyes with long, rooted eyelashes, small mouths and unnervingly no nose. Most of the dolls have very little in the way of articulation. Their shoulders and heads can move but their arms and legs tend to just be stuck in the position that they came in causing some to complain that they were more like figurines than actual dolls. But where Novi Stars really shined is the insane character designs and gimmicks. The dolls tagline is what on earth is going on and yeah that's pretty accurate when you look at some of these things. The first four dolls released were Universe, Ari Roma, Ali Electric and Maytallic. Yeah this is another one one of those really pun heavy doll lines so if there are any dads watching this one's for you. Universe is blue with white hair and has translucent legs filled with water and glitter. Ari Roma is light pink with glittery skin and large purple and pink afro puffs. As the name implies she's scented and smells like bubblegum. Ali Electric is a classic green alien with hot pink and black hair complete with a hair bow. Using a button on her backpack you can make her skin glow and change colours. They explain this in Universe as her being shy so she blushes all the colours of the rainbow, which is fun. Trivia, Ali Electric's name is coined from electric. No way. Maytallic, the final of the core four, is a metallic pink doll with very Miku-esque turquoise pigtails. Her gimmick is that she can talk. Yikes! Circuit overload! That's so cosmic fly. Space out! 
It's actually pretty great. They give her this robotic voice and add these little stutters and glitch sounds for effect. It's actually a really cool little detail. From day one, this doll line had a pretty hard time finding popularity, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but they were popular enough that they got a bunch more releases, and believe it or not, they're even wackier. You might be asking right now, are they really going to go through every single Novi Stars doll and explain what they are? Yes, yes I am. I'm having so much fun right now. <laughs> Nita Light is translucent white with violet hair, and she came with a quote unquote pod playset that you could put her in to make her float around and glow as the pod changes colours. According to reviews, the pod was extremely noisy though, rendering it kind of useless as an actual nightlight. Tula Toned is a very unique looking doll with pale pink skin and two-toned blue and white hair. She also has homophobia in her eyes with one pink and one blue eye, as well as having this weird kind of geometric face pattern. She has a long hot pink tail and sparkly dragon-like wings, and her gimmick is that her legs are translucent and filled with pink and blue goop. I told you, these designs are whack and they only get weirder from here. Mally Tasker is a pearly white doll with long black hair and yellow streaks. She has four arms that are stretchy and can glow in the dark. Cyclops is a glittery dark purple with white hair, as well as a single Cyclops eye that can light up. This design is honestly sick, that dark shimmering raspberry color is so fantastic. Cece Through and Gail Lexi are larger create a doll style dolls called Stellar Skins that come with many different body parts and accessories to mix and match. Anne Arctic is a snow themed doll with pale white skin that transitions into an icy blue gradient on her arms and legs. Her hair is furry and white and she has little bear ears poking out which is adorable. Her gimmick is that her legs are hollow and filled with quote unquote cosmic snow. On the other hand, Inner Ferna is a fire themed doll with a pale face and an orange body which transitions into a black gradient on her arms and legs giving her a cool charred look. Her hair is long and red and the chunky plastic fire crown on her head lights up. Mimi Mirai's and Vera Tabray are part of the so called Supernovas series which are slightly larger and more detailed than the regular dolls. And they just so happen to be two of the most highly sought after dolls in the entire line. To be fair, most Novi Stars dolls tend to go for at least $100 at least in New Zealand currency, if not way more, especially if they're brand new in the box, but looking at eBay, Mimi Mirai's two listings are $600 and $800 respectively, and that's for pretty well used dolls outside of the box. That should tell you all that you need to know about how rare and highly sought after these two are, and it's easy to see why. Plain and simple, the designs slap. Mimi Mirai's entire body is covered in a hypnotic swirling pattern of white and purple, half of her face is obscured by a black mask, and she has long white hair. Her her eyes are blue and purple swirls which will start spinning if you press a button on the side of her head. Vera Tabray is a light metallic pink with three large glittery silver eyes. Her arms transition into a translucent white and her legs are this awesome skeletal metallic silver. She also has large silver wings made of bones and long black and silver hair. She was released in 2013 and the Monster High character Benita Fema, a light pink doll with pale white blonde and black hair and wings made out of bone, was released in 2014. I'm not saying there's conspiracy here but there may be a conspiracy here. Tilly Vision is a hair play doll with all of these crazy coils and wires in her long hair. She has some sort of boxy device on her torso giving her a robotic look as well as one mechanical leg. Robotic is an almost identical doll with pink and silver accents and a robotic eye. At this point Novi Stars had lasted for just two years but it was time for their final four releases. Doe A Dear is kind of the odd one out among the other dolls having a softer more naturey aesthetic that's pretty unique to her specifically. They never really made any other dolls that were like her. She's white with a light brown gradient on her hands and forehead as well as long lilac hair and large deer antlers. Her gimmick is that she has fuzzy flocked skin. Justina Hour is a bright green doll and side note for a doll line about aliens they did not have enough green dolls with split dyed pink and black hair. She has a mechanical clock contraption on her head and her hot pink eyes can move side to side. Carmela Sweet is a glittery pink doll who according to the box is quote unquote gummy soft <laughs> which I really hate. <laughs> don't call it that. Don't. Stop. It essentially means that her body is rubbery and bendy and kind of squishy. She has large pink and blue swirl eyes, neon orange eyelashes, and curly purple and blue hair. Needless to say, there's a lot going on here. And finally, Frostina Sprinkles. She's a pearly pinkish white with teal hair, red eyes, four arms, and hollow legs filled with sprinkles. After this, MGA officially retired Novi Stars as a brand and they were removed from store shelves. In recent times, some unreleased Novi Stars dolls that never 
made it to shelves were posted on the Crystalline Toy Box doll blog. There are a few turns of various pets for the dolls, but what I'm really interested in here are the Novi stars themselves. There's this incredible dragon style model with intricate scale detailing, full articulation, and a long coiling tail with spikes. This model is super Nova size, so larger than regular Novis, and the detailing continues to the back of the head, leading the author to speculate over whether the doll had a removable wig to make room for some sort of electronic feature. Another model has a mermaid's tail, complete with fins and face decals that look like a cross between fish scales and angel wings. As noted by the author, the tail is lacking in detail, suggesting that it may have been filled with water or some other kind of liquid, as was a common gimmick for the Novi stars. The final model is a zombie girl with molded bandages, stitching, and an exposed skeletal leg. Her spine is even faintly visible on her back. The attention to detail, especially with the intricate stitching and the little heart-shaped joints, is crazy. Taking all of these models together, it's likely that this Novi Star's range would have been monster-themed, though that leaves the question of what the fourth girl would have been, as unfortunately a fourth prototype has never been released. Interestingly, a comment from a user called Colin Dixon on the Crystalline Toy Box blog reads, quote, Hi, wow, this was a random find. I saw your Novi Star's post and I actually worked for Varna Studios. I am responsible for a few of the unruly sculpts that you posted. That was my very first job with the company and industry and have worked with them ever since. How on earth did you get those turns? That project was extremely creative and progressive, but between production value and sheer weirdness didn't really click with kids unfortunately. There was a lot of love and work that went into these dolls and pets, but only a fraction of it ever came out. From this post, we can gather that Novi Stars was a failure on multiple fronts. First of all, the sheer weirdness. Now this line is interesting because it's one of those ahead of its time things that people only really appreciate after the fact. During their release, they were actually pretty widely mocked. Their odd alien appearance was seen as weird, their striking designs were seen as tacky, and their hollow legs and glowing skin and scented bodies were seen as weird cheap gimmicks. That's absolutely not to say that everyone hated them or anything, but the general consensus back then seemed to be, these dolls have an interesting concept, but in execution, they're weird and kinda cheap. Which actually couldn't be further from the truth. From Colin's comment about production value, it appears that the dolls cost more to make than they were actually earning back. And it makes complete sense, these dolls were really intricate, having glittery bodies, wings, horns, multicolored hair and various crazy styles, hollow liquid filled limbs, glass eyes, rooted eyelashes, electronic light features, scented bodies and more. Even looking at the unreleased dolls, the level of detail is extreme, they weren't cutting any corners here and unfortunately in the toy business cutting corners tends to be more profitable. But Novi Stars has something that a lot of cheaper doll lines that are still successful today don't, an incredible legacy. Novi Stars have achieved cult status in the doll community, widely loved and praised as being inventive, unique, and way ahead of their time. For years the doll community has been petitioning MGA to reboot Novi Stars, and up until now that had seemed like a pretty unrealistic pipe dream. Until recently when MGA put out a Rainbow High doll called Zoe Electra. She's themed around space and high tech, and is <gasps> wearing a Novi Stars t-shirt with Mimi Mirai's on it. Mimi is also on her phone and laptop. Many have said that Zoe herself resembles a Novi star with her alien appearance and naturally her release has led to rumours of the line being rebooted. For now, all we can do is wait. Zoe's Novi star shirt could just be a little easter egg, a nod to the fans and a way to acknowledge their old IP. Or maybe, just maybe, it could be a hint that Novi stars really are returning. MGA, if you're watching this, please bring these dolls back and please bring me on as a consultant to help design them. All my suggestions will just be to give the dolls hollow legs with like liquid inside them because that's what you guys did for all of the first dolls and my other suggestion will be to not have them say touch me i'm gummy soft anymore <laughs> i don't think that should be a thing So we first covered the Lost Trash and Alley doll line in my first video, and since then there's been a huge discovery. For those who haven't heard of this mysterious line, here's a recap. In 2020, doll collectors began noticing some unknown doll bodies popping up on AliExpress. They were notable for many reasons, chief among them being the clawed feet, molded fur detailing, and large rat tails. The doll community tends to be very tuned into the world of doll lines and production, so even on a site like AliExpress that's flooded with bootlegs and knockoffs, these very much stood out. From the 
original product images, we can see that there were four different designs. One pink, likely hairless rat, one brown rat, one white rat, and one beige slash tan rat. Each was clad in various different quirky outfits meant to look like they were cobbled together using garbage from strawberry candy wrapper shoes with screw heels to old discarded newspaper skirts to cut and sewn sock dresses and pins holding them all together. It was cute, it was quirky, and images soon began to flood Twitter, Tumblr, and Reddit as a few selected doll collectors managed to get their hands on them and began posting images. It was noted that these were clearly prototypes. Many of the models had flaws with their paint jobs and felt shoddily constructed, and most notably of all, none of them had heads. None of the original AliExpress listings had photos containing the doll's heads, and when collectors finally got their dolls delivered, they were indeed headless. Cerise Starlight, who runs the Crystalline Toy Box blog, actually managed to find the name of the line. They found that Hasbro had trademarked the name Trash and Alley in 2018, which matched the production date printed on the dolls. From there though, the investigation tapered off. Though the doll community remained heavily invested in this mystery, no further information was found, and they were left with more questions than answers. In my previous video, we discussed the various possibilities behind the line, and the most likely scenario, in my opinion, is that in 2018, these unfinished prototype models were produced in a factory somewhere in China, which is where many Hasbro toys are made, according to an article published by Reuters in 2020, where they would have gathered dust and storage. It was likely decided around 2019 or 2020 that the line would be cancelled, which meant that the dolls no longer needed to be stored and were basically free for the taking. Many bulk doll sellers and collectors have links to these factories, which allows them to get defective, cancelled, and even pre-released doll parts and dolls. Many get thrown out and disposed of, but many more are shipped off or given away. And that's where Yingzi Doll comes into play. Last time that we discussed Trash and Alley and speculated about what the finished dolls might look like, we had very little to go off other than speculation and a bunch of headless rats. But now, we have a head. Against all odds, we have found a Trash and Alley head and now have an idea of what the line was meant to look like in full. So Yingzi Doll is an account on Instagram that posts doll content, including a bunch of what appear to be factory prototype doll parts. They have a lot of disassembled brats, Rainbow High, and other miscellaneous obscure dolls as well, and on the 26th of October 2022, they posted this. The doll's head is stark white, clearly unpainted, and the ears are an odd green shade, likely also unpainted. The hair is a vibrant red, done up on a ponytail with choppy bangs. The head itself has large cartoonish eye sockets, a protruding mouse-like nose, and a wide smile with large front teeth visible. Above the nose there's a sort of crinkling detail, and the sides of the head appear to have fur detailing. It's accompanied by a card, which is more apparent in the second image. It's titled Ovation Toys Sample Submission Card, and the customer is listed as Hasbro, with the submission date being the 20th of July 2018, which matches the Trash and Alley trademark almost exactly. The item number is E6412, and under that is the name Vermina. Originally, I couldn't find any info on what an r and sample could be, especially relating to the toy industry, but then my editor Pella, who is a legend, found an old thread on a forum for industry professionals about how to gauge r and quality in the plastics industry. From this post, it appears that in this context, an r and sample is used to test the look and quality quality of the head mold and the plastics used in it. It was already pretty obvious, but this basically confirms the theory that all of the Trash and Alley dolls are prototypes. As soon as I saw the head, I was completely flabbergasted and shocked. I honestly did not expect anything Trash and Alley to come out for a long time, and then here it was, just a month after my original video. These things look pretty damn cool as well. I originally predicted that the dolls would fall into the uncanny valley, as many animal-based dolls do, taking on a human-like appearance with superficial, kinda creepy-looking mouse features, and I'm surprised and pleased to announce that I was wrong. While it doesn't air as rat-like as many would have liked, it still has a pretty animalistic look, very similar to the proportions and style of anthropomorphization of Pinky Cooper and the Jet Set Pets, with the sort of wide, round haired large eyes and animal-like nose and mouth. It also reminds me a bit of Mercedes King, a Monster High doll released in 2015. She has very similar features, especially the nose and mouth. Having been created just a few years prior, I wouldn't be surprised if this line was at least partially inspired by her doll. Unfortunately, there is still much that we don't know. The head has surfaced, but we have no idea how their features would have been painted, and we still don't have any concept art of the characters, their design, box art, and marketing, nothing. After I made a Twitter thread on the new finding, wanting to share the news and hoping to drum up some support for the search, two things happened. Firstly, I reached out to Yingzi Doll to ask where they found the heads and if they could share any further info about the dolls. They saw it and never replied. <laughs> Why did they always leave me on 
unread. I'm kidding, obviously that's fine and they're under no obligation to answer weird rat related questions from strangers, I completely understand. With that lead dead, a second very curious thing happened. I got a curious reply to my thread by a user called Jeanette. She wrote, quote, I came up with this idea back in 2016 while working at Hasbro and spent over a year developing it with the best industry talent. It's crazy this was leaked, but I must say I'm thrilled to see how many people love rats wearing trash in. Thank you all for proving me right. Firstly, I just have to point out if this is true, that makes the Mercedes King conspiracy theory even more suspicious since the idea started development just a year after her doll came out. I'm not saying that's a real thing, I'm not saying that happened, I'm just saying it's an idea. But honestly, that's really just a theory. A game theory. And secondly, this is a very significant development because if it is true, it means that she's likely the first person who actually worked on the line to come forward and publicly speak about it. Unfortunately, despite reaching out multiple times, I never heard back. <laughs> left on red again. Without any further elaboration or proof, there's no way to confirm or deny this tweet, so for now it has to be taken with a big old grain of salt. As far as Hasbro's rats go though, that's where this update ends. It's incredibly exciting that we now have a head, and the doll community feels more hopeful than ever that we'll be able to piece together more information about this brand, since there's clearly more unreleased content out there. If you or anyone you know worked on this line, or owns any of these dolls, or knows anything at all, please do share. We've already put so many pieces of the puzzle together but there's still work to do. And who knows, if people show enough support for the line maybe one day we'll get a release. We can but dream. So the other day I was at the mall and I was actually looking for the new generation of Monster High dolls and don't worry I'll talk about that in a future video because that's a rabbit hole and a half. But then I saw this toy out of the corner of my eye and I already had Novi Stars on the brain because I had been researching for this video so when I whipped around I thought that it was a Novi Stars toy but it was actually this. Now this wasn't the first time I'd seen Nebula Stars toys, they've been a silent but constant presence on toy store shelves for a while but before now I never really paid them much mind. But now I was curious, and as always on this channel, my curiosity is now your problem. So Nebula Stars is a kids lifestyle brand and doll line created by Canadian toy company Tween Team. Nebula Stars first made their presence known in September of 2017 when they created a Facebook page. The first few posts are mainly just new cover photos and profile picture uploads in one uh, Coldplay quote for some reason. <laughs> by October of 2017 they had begun steadily posting about their products being available in stores so we can place the product launch around late 2017. Nebula Stars as a brand is kind of odd. It's not technically a doll line, it's advertised as a kids lifestyle brand specializing mostly in arts and crafts. Their activity book line features coloring books, watercolor kits, sketchbooks, and secret diaries. Their arts and crafts range features porcelain painting, color by numbers, and figurine painting. They also sell various fashion and jewelry making kits for necklaces, headbands, friendship bracelets, and crowns. Aside from looking like it would be a good gift to get like a half cousin that you don't no, Nebula Stars are also meant to encourage positive values and mindfulness in children. Quote, The Nebula Stars universe offers young girls from 7 years old a unique environment that combines aesthetics, well-being, and positive values. A wide variety of activities will keep children entertained while encouraging their personal development. In a world where children are affected by the chaos of modern life, this new line will allow them to reach a state of calm and well-being. This focus is very much embodied in the various character pages available on the website. Nebula Stars has a rich rich cast of characters all drawn in this gorgeous starry watercolour style. The characters are Nebulia, Eclipsia, Marinia, Hazelia, Petulia, Corellia, Isadora, Isiana, Australia, okay my accent literally just made that sound like her name is Australia, and Aurelia. They all live among the stars in a cosmic cloud but each lives in a different location from glowing forests to undersea castles to palaces made of ice. They each have a bio page and very much in line with the whole mindfulness thing there are several sections on things like body, mind, love, and creativity. They espouse the values of eating your vegetables, meditating to relieve stress, coloring mandalas, hugging trees, getting lots of exercise, etc. You know, classic good values. The messaging behind the brand is actually really good, especially in relation to mental health stuff. There are lots of messages in there about dealing with anxiety, treating your body right, finding creative outlets, and that's all good positive stuff for kids to learn about. But the way it's all phrased is just like 
Like, look, I understand that this line is meant to be targeted at younger kids around seven and up, but when I was that age, I would always just immediately disengage from any book or toy or product that tried to be educational in that kind of condescending way. It's all laid out in very basic terms, you know, I'm Nebulia, I love my friends, I eat healthy, I journal my feelings, beauty is in everything and love is important. All of those things are good and true, you know, I don't mean to sound jaded, but personally I think when you convey it using that very basic kind of pan during kid talk, the kids are gonna switch off. That's just my opinion though, with the number of products that this brand has and is still putting out, it's clearly been successful and I'm sure that it's been helpful for a lot of kids. All I'm saying is like, let Nebulia say a swear word or something and then the kids will really be listening to her life lessons. The art for the brand is gorgeous, it has this really lovely fairy tale picture book quality to it, the vibrant swirling watercolours give it a dreamy look and all of these designs are fantastic. The constellation patterns on Nebulia's forehead, the beautiful sparkly scale textures of Marinia, Petulia's flower petal eyelashes and tulip shaped hair, Aurelia's luminescent hair and her butterfly wing dress, there are just so many gorgeous details to obsess over in these renders. They're incredibly intricate and filled with colour and texture and tiny details, jewellery and pins and fabric and freckles. Each girl's bio page also has a ton of these cute little sketchy renders of them just hanging out. The looser style and simple colouring style are really endearing and help give life to these characters who, while beautiful, do kind of have that glazed over thousand yard stare in their main renders. But this is meant to be a video about dolls, so why did I bring a weird tween lifestyle brand into it? Well, as a matter of fact, Nebula Stars actually did have dolls, and they look like this. Yeah. The overwhelming opinion within the doll community is that this is a beautiful range of designs let down by extremely whack dolls. Compared to the delicate pastels and glimmering watercolours on the elegant box designs, the dolls are much less visually striking. Their colours don't match the illustrations at all, their heads are huge in comparison to their weirdly proportioned bodies, and that stare, man. I thought that the box art renders looked vacant, this is like a whole other level. The dolls retail for upwards of $50 to $60, and while they are physically quite large dolls, they lack any intricate detail, having extremely basic and cheap looking clothes, and don't even have any joint articulation. Some opinions collected from the r slash dolls subreddit read, quote, It's like they spent up to 90% of the budget on the art and forgot the actual dolls. It's the eyes. I'm curious to see if they can be repositioned. I feel like the dolls might actually be cuter if the eyes were adjusted out of the creepy vacant staring into a natural position like the artwork. They look like bootlegs. So what are these knockoff Novi stars? They look terrible. At least they succeeded in making them look like aliens. The bug-eyed, five-headed, uncanny valley looking ass type of aliens that is. All they need is green skin and completely black eyes and they'll be perfect. The box art is beautiful but the dolls lack the detail and proportion that makes the art beautiful. Despite this frosty response, as far as I can tell, the dolls aren't really a staple item in the nebulous stars catalog. The large majority of their products are arts and craft kits, activity books or lifestyle items, and a series of plushies based on the character's pets, which I can imagine kids would find pretty appealing. I don't like that some of them have human lips, but <laughs> I'm powerless to change that. <laughs> it's a terrible shame because, as many have already pointed out, these dolls could have been absolutely beautiful. In their renders, their proportions and facial structures are very reminiscent of Ever After High or even Monster High, so why they ended up going with these very odd uncanny builds and faces is a mystery to me. The designs are all absolutely stunning and they would have made beautiful dolls. They're already selling them for like $60 so why not go the extra mile and make them all beautiful and pastely and sparkly like their designs. I'm not saying they have to include every single detail but pretty much anything's better than what they came out with. With Nebula Stars still active as a brand and producing many products, there's still a chance for them to redeem themselves with another doll release. Tons of collectors still have a Novi Stars sized hole in their heart that Nebula stars would be perfect to fill if they step up their game and give those stunning designs the attention that they need. Only time will tell, but in the meantime if there are any OOAK doll customizers that want to step up to the plate and make a like revised Nebula Stars doll, the opportunity is there for the taking. There are some great designs there just free for you to use, so go wild. <laughs> Like I said in the beginning, the world of dolls is wild and wacky and honestly just fascinating. I find it so interesting to look at doll lines, their premise, their designs, what other lines they're taking inspiration from, and comparing that to how well they sold, if they were well received, and what their legacy is. I absolutely love looking at various weird and obscure dolls, and I would absolutely love to make more videos in this vein, so if you have any suggestions for other doll lines that you want me to cover, definitely let me know. Also let me know if you own any of the dolls in here, whether you own a Novi 
star, a nebula star, or if you have any of the trash in LA prototypes, I would absolutely love to hear from you. These dolls are just so fascinating and interesting, and I love hearing about them, especially from people who have first-hand experience with them, or if you remember advertisements or drama related to them, or just anything at all, definitely chime in. I love hearing what you guys have to say, and I love reading your comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed this video topic. If you ever have any uh, future video ideas that you want me to cover, definitely let me know. I'm always trying to add more stuff to my list, so feel free to leave a comment, and definitely, like I said, if you have any stories to share about the dolls that we talked about today, please do. Special thank you to Enview for sponsoring this video, and thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it, and I really hope to see you in the next one. Bye! A huge thank you to my Garfield overlords over on Patreon. Xavier Araujo, Ren Pendragon, The Furby Librarian, Tentabat, Strawberries, Simon, SHSL Sunson, Sheriff Whiskey, Oliver Lols, Michelle Olsen, Matt LRJ, Katrina Likes 5e e Stuff, Jorge K. Cruz, John Leach, Joe Bradshaw, Jesse Chisholm, Helm Hamburger Hand, Grip Gunderson, Fitzy, Fish000, Electro Kitten, Dozo Blint, Doug, David Martinez, Dana Home Gardener, Charlie B, Caramel Coffee Bean, Blue Mayfeld, Astrium Vortex, and a riddle wrapped in an enigma hidden by a question mark. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. It means the world. If you want to join these guys over on Patreon, the link will be in the description. And yeah, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for watching this video, and I really hope to see you in the next one. Bye!